Day yesterday. Oh, well, yeah. right. And so we didn't get to celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, but I wanted to do a morning reading about Valentine's Day. Um, oh, gotta fix it. Oh, oh he's got he's fixing the resolution. Um, <laughs> yes, right. So I was thinking, okay, Valentine's Day, like what kind of spin can I put on Valentine's Day? I like Valentine's Day. I also like math. I'm a math teacher, and I'm like, how does math tie into Valentine's Day? So we'll get there, right? Don't fall asleep yet, because it's actually kind of interesting. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about is first Romeo and Juliet. So you guys familiar with Shakespeare's famous play? Yeah. Uh, the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. Um, so it's a wonderful, wonderful story of some star-crossed lovers. Uh, also a great film with Leonardo DiCaprio, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, it's modernized. Uh, and it's got Leo, who's awesome. Uh, there's also an older version of the movie and the play, but Romeo and Juliet uh, is super cute. So, the situation that I'm going to present to you guys is we have two lovers, right? In this case, Romeo and Juliet. We're going to try and describe their attraction to each other using math. So, <laughs> Romeo loves affection, right? He's, he's like a puppy. The more you pet him, the more he loves you, right? The more, that, the more that Juliet is into Romeo, the more that Romeo is into Juliet. So when she buys him flowers on Valentine's Day, he just gets smitten, right? He loves that. Whereas Juliet is a little different. Juliet, she likes to work for him. Right? She likes guys that aren't quite as into her. She likes guys, she wants to, she wants, she likes to play hard to get. You know, the more Romeo likes her, she's like, oh, no, that Romeo guy's kind of too into me. He needs to pump the brakes a little bit. So she likes guys that are a little bit less intensely into her. So they've got a little bit of a balance. So we're going to describe this pattern using the differential equations for love. Right? And I know, I know a lot of you guys aren't in calculus class. Differential equations aren't actually scary. Right? You don't actually need to do calculus to understand a differential equation. Even if you're in Algebra 1 right now, the idea of a differential equation is pretty simple. It just means change. Differential equations describe things that are changing, I guess. No. Well, that word is change. Uh, so we can have a change in love, right? How does Romeo's love change? We can have a change in speed. We talk about that a lot in calculus class. Maybe it's a change in the amount of attention that you guys are going to pay my morning reading. If I start talking about math, you guys are probably like, nah, right, snooze. Your change in attention level is negative, right? You're going, going down. So we have differential equations, and you can also get them related to each other in different ways. So, for example, let's say I start talking about math, and you guys start getting really, really bored. Right? So that's the equation. The more I talk about math, the more bored you guys get. But the more bored you guys get, the more animated and energized I get, because I see you're bored and I want to engage you. And then you guys start getting engaged, I'm like, oh, they're doing fine. I can like calm down and maybe start talking with a more monotone voice. And then you guys space out again. And I'm like, oh, they're spaced out. Now I need to get really engaged. <laughs> and so they're related to each other, right? Different how much effort I put into teaching maybe is related to how much attention you guys pay. So there are all these interrelated differential equations. Um, and they're different kinds. So um, I guess I drew this graph a little bit. Well, I'll just describe it. So they're different, they're different kinds of differential equations. For example, you can get ones that are in equilibrium. So let's say, for example, we find the perfect balance between how engaged of a teacher I am and how much attention you pay. And it sort of circles around this one final point where I find, OK, I'm going to be this engaged in teaching, and you guys are going to be this bored. <laughs> right? well, Romeo is going to be this in love with Juliet, and Juliet's going to be that in love with Romeo. And it's going to stay that way. So eventually, it's going to work its way out. We can also have them where they will oscillate. So it'll go back and forth and back and forth forever. Say, OK, then you guys get more bored, then I get more engaging, then you get more bored. Right? So it can go back and forth. Or it can spiral off into infinity or spiral off into negative infinity. So there are all these different options of what can happen when you put differential equations together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how they work with Romeo and Juliet and their <coughs> Romance. 
So bear with me. I've got some basic, very basic <laughs> equations here, right? R represents Romeo's love for Juliet. So we've got this here on the y-axis, right? With 10 being true love and negative 10 being, like, really can't stand. Right, and we're gonna have, actually, I've got zero in here too. Uh, zero is described by uh, the friend zone. <laughs> This is love. Um, then this is the differential equation, which if you're not taking calculus class, I won't be offended if you're like, whoa, what's that? If you're taking calculus, this should you should follow me. It's called R prime. And it's the change in Romeo's love over time. So this T says as time changes, how does Romeo's love change? And for our cases, right, Romeo's love gets more intense as Juliet's love increases. So we have r prime of t is going to equal some positive number times Juliet's love. That's the differential equation that describes Romeo's love. Whereas Juliet, j, her change is negative. So we have Juliet over here, j prime, and that is equal to some negative constant times Romeo. So the more Romeo loves her, the less she loves him back. So it goes in the negative direction. So depending on how we change these variables and make these plus or minus, different things happen to Romeo's love for Juliet and Juliet's, Juliet's love for Romeo. So hopefully we can tweak these variables and make it a happy ending. Because everybody likes that. But Romeo and Juliet's not a happy ending. So. <laughs> So anyway, I've got this little website. It's gonna work. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Kelly goes somewhere. <laughs> okay. So I put in right the change here. Let's call this 0.3y. And we'll call this one negative 0.3. I'm just making point three as the constant for their love. <laughs> uh, <laughs> initial condition. Uh -oh. oh yeah. Oh yeah. So where where do we want them to start? You guys want them to start out in love? Do you want them to start out in the friend zone? Friend zone. Friend zone. Uh, friend zone. Friend zone. So we'll see what happens if they start with the friend zone. So point zero. Zero. Gavin says that's not how it happens in the book. No. <laughs> they don't start in the friend zone? <laughs> so they start out, and it's kind of love at first sight in the play, right? Well, we'll start. Yeah, so we'll start with, with them being kind of in love with each other. I'll remember that part. They're each, they're each in a five. They're like, ah, oh, I just met you, this is crazy. <laughs> Or give you a flower, kiss you, or something. <laughs> so, what happens is we get a circle. Right, we start here, and it goes around. Right here, we have they love each other. Then we come down here. So, it starts here, and it goes this way, actually. Red. Right, so it goes this way, around and around and around and around and around. So, some, a quarter of the time, they love each other. That's good. Sometimes, Juliet loves Romeo, and Romeo's like, I don't like this girl. <laughs> a quarter of the time, they just, they want to break up. They're both, they want out of there. Another quarter of the time, Romeo's into it, and Juliet's not. And then they come back. So they spiral around and around and around. And as I change these numbers, if I change these constants, I'm going to make this one like 0.9 to make Romeo really, really into her, it changes the shape of this graph. And so I can get a really wide graph to describe it. But I can also, I'm almost down here, I promise. If I, if I make Juliet's constant no longer negative, so I say Juliet also likes Romeo's affection, they're into each other, then their love goes off to infinity. Which is great. Whoa. Right? Oh, wow. So they go up here and they're like, oh, we're going to love each other like more even though whatever it happens. So 
Anyway, in summary, <laughs> differential equations, math, have a lot of interesting applications in love or also just in general describing patterns uh, in the real world. So with that, have a wonderful day.